Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's Biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a past exam question. Now, you can use this question to practice for an upcoming test or exam. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with those notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, this particular video was a members voted video. So the members chose the topic of this video for this week. And I thank them for such a great choice because I know many of you are preparing for tests that are coming up. And if you would like to become a member, don't forget that you can join on my homepage. There's just a little join button there. And there are so many perks, which include free access to my study guide members only videos and live lessons. And speaking of live lessons, if you are a member, look out for the notification for when we go live this week. So let's get into the question itself. Now, this particular question is on a bit of a medium level, I would say. Um, it's not the hardest question I've done in this series before, but it definitely has some nuances to it. And basically, if you don't get some of the earlier on questions correct, um, the rest are going to be wrong. So that's the sucky part about this kind of question. It puts it in the medium area of difficulty. I always tell my matrix to break down the image before they start answering the question. So let's have a look over at our diagram and see the blurb at the top. It says, the diagram below shows an error that's an important piece of information that occurred during meiosis in humans. And that's also an important bit because the humans bit uh, definitely will impact how we answer this question as we go along. So first of all, at the very beginning, it looks like we've got a standard cell. That cell looks like it's undergone um, what we would call DNA replications, because you can see the chromosomes have doubled. So we've got two chromatids per chromosome. Um, and then what we notice is we've got two cells, but this cell over here seems to have an extra chromosome. And this one looks like it is short one of its chromosomes. And so we're probably looking at some kind of um, non-disjunction question. Um, and I would just even jot that down on the page itself when you do your test so you don't forget. So there's definitely some kind of non-disjunction situation going on. And always before I move on, I always like to label things as well. So structure one and structure two. Um, structure one is going to be the cell membrane. So I'm just going to shorthand that and write yeah, CM for cell membrane. Now that other structure is sitting in on the inside. It's got a dotted line, which means it's reforming or it's disappearing, whichever one it is. But the only thing that disappears during meiosis is going to be the nuclear membrane. So I'm just going to write here NM for short, nuclear membrane. So let's go over to the questions and see what they want from us. So number one says, according to the diagram, during which phase of meiosis did the error mentioned occur? Now, if we're looking at this, uh, the only time that non-disjunction can occur, in other words, chromosomes fail to separate, is going to be in anaphase. Now, ana it can occur actually in anaphase 1 or 2. I always encourage my grade 12s to write anaphase 1 or 2. In other words, you must just not leave it as anaphase, right? Give us a 1 or a 2. Moving on to number two, it's asking us which structure, one or two, um, in cell uh, A is the nuclear membrane, which luckily for us, look, we've actually already identified it over there, which is going to be structure two. So all we're going to write there is the number two. And then it says, how many chromosomes are shown in the diagram? Now, this question at first can be a little bit ambiguous because what do they mean by in the diagram? Like, which diagram. I just want you to know that the fact that they mentioned cell A at the beginning here means that we're still referencing that same cell, so don't get confused or lost. So how many chromosomes are in that picture? Well, there's one over here and two over there, so we've got two, right? Number one and number two. Then it says state the origin of the chromosomes that we find in cell A, right? Now, when they speak about origin, you're probably thinking, do they mean the cell before? Like, is that the origin? No. What they're actually asking is, in that diagram, that is a homologous pair. And we have learned that homologous pairs come in paternal and maternal chromosomes. And so that's actually what we're looking for. Because you can see there is a, a two mark there. 
So what they're looking for is they are looking for the origins of those chromosomes being a paternal chromosome or a maternal chromosome. So that's what they are looking for over there, paternal or maternal. Moving on to our next question, draw a diagram of the phase in cell A before the error occurred. Now, this is why I'm saying if you don't know where the error occurred, you're going to get all these other questions wrong. The error occurred, as we mentioned at the beginning of the question, in anaphase 1 or 2. Now, they're asking you to draw the phase before that error. So what are you going to have to draw? You are going to have to draw metaphase, okay? Now, um, specifically, we don't know if it's metaphase 1 or metaphase 2, so you could draw either one of them. And in my memo that I'm going to show you at the end, I've only got one example, but uh, the original memo has both of them. But essentially, it's out of four marks, okay? These are the minimum things I would draw. Number one, you are always going to need a heading, okay? So I would put a heading of something like diagram showing, uh, what are we doing? Metaphase. And uh, let's be specific, and I'm just going to pretend we're doing metaphase two, okay? So you're going to have to draw your cell. You're going to have to draw your centrioles with your chromosomes lined up on the equator like this. Yes, you will need to draw two because it must match what is in cell A. You're going to draw the spindle fibers coming down and joining to them. Now, it is for four marks, which means you need to give at least three labels. Now, there's a lot that you can label here, right? You can do the cell membrane. You could do spindle fiber. What else could we do here? We could do um, the chromosome, because that's a chromosome. Um, or you could do a curly bracket as well and say that's the chromosome. Um, if you really wanted to, we could also go centriole. Okay. Um, I would avoid labeling things like cytoplasm and stuff like that just because it's not really a important label in uh, phases of meiosis. Um, so I would rather stick to things that you know for certain. Um, you can also uh, label things like uh, centromere as well. But I think these four are enough. Now, for the last question, it says, in humans, and this is important, in humans, how many chromosomes would be present in gamete 2? So we go back over to our diagram, and we're going to look for gamete 2, which is this one over here. Now, what they are stipulating or what they are trying to say is if this was a human cell, how many chromosomes would it have? So I just want you to stick with me here and we do a little bit of quick maths here together. If the original cell is representing human cells, that means we would have 46, whereas this picture has two, right, as a representation. What they are saying is in gamete 1, it will be 23 plus 1 because they got this extra chromosome over here. But it, in gamete 2, they are technically 23 minus 1 because they've lost one to the next door neighbor. So the answer is in gamete 2, we will get 22 chromosomes. So that's how many chromosomes will be present. How did I work that out? Again, I started with what was the original amount of chromosomes. If we went through standard meiosis and we lost an extra chromosome to a gamete, in other words, generally you're supposed to have 23 chromosomes, but in one gamete we got one extra and in the other we got one less. That is how I arrived to the number 22. Now, here is the memo. Um, as you can see, it's very, very straightforward. The only one that is missing from here is 2.4.5, but that was the number of chromosomes, which I showed you how to work out. You can now go back and have a look at specifics, but I think it's very straightforward, this memo. Um, and don't forget to go and look at my other meiosis questions, because I have done many of these actually before that you can go and watch and use. But don't forget to like this video if it's helped, and I will see you all again soon. Bye!